What is up guys it's the real deal welcome back to the channel guys we're gonna do something a little different today we're gonna do a reaction video to the new video polarium have dropped for the update coming up in raid and i'll be honest i've already watched the video and there's some things like absolute alarm bells um i do have some major major concerns but let's watch the video there is some good stuff in there as well and let's see what's coming. Hey everyone, update 8.20 is right around the corner. Update 8.20. Like, I'll be honest, this guy has a way, way sexier voice than me. But I, th I don't know, something in this video is like his voice is breaking. So let's take a sneak peek at what's coming. Today, we're looking at a new type of skill. Some important quality of life up. Quality of light updates are huge in this one. Updates, along with some new champions coming. New champions! Coming in the future. Let's dive in. First up on the list, we've got faction unity skills. These are faction unity skills. Sounds good. Brand new type of skill that we're introducing for a specific legendary champions who are important figures in Teleria's past, present, and even future. I really like this. So this means that they're adding champions from like the lore. And, you know, I love the gameplay in Raid. I love the character design. But it's just nice to add, like, an element of the story in there as well. With these champions being famous commanders, exalted warlords, and celebrated leaders within their faction, it makes sense that they have skills that get stronger when they fight alongside their fellow countrymen. Fellow countrymen. I don't know. It makes Hence the name, Faction Unity Skills. Faction Unity Skills. They can be skills. either active or passive and are powerful on their own, but become even better when used alongside allies from the same faction. Each Faction Unity Skill has three levels. With Okay, so let's have a look at this passive. So um, allies under a shield buff receive 10% less damage. This is insane. Um, this is something like Duchess does this. Uh, for she reduces AOE damage. Pytheon for every um, buff that you put on a teammate, he uh, reduces damage as well. So this is like damage and mitigation. Um, so really, really strong ability, and that would pair really nicely, like with uh, Pytheon and Duchess as well. So then, if we've got two champions uh, from Banner Lords, including Acel in the Stalwart, um, allies under a shield buff are immune to stuff. Well, basically all forms of cc I mean, that's strong that is like having a built-in block debuffs not quite as strong but still very very strong if we've got three champions uh, allies under ally protection buffs have a 20 percent chance to counter attack when hit nice and then if we've got four champions the shield buff is increased by 100 percent i mean that is huge that is a big big buff each one unlocking new effects based on the number of allies from the same Okay, so his A3 uh, places a shield buff equal to 30% of this champ's max HP um, on all allies. Uh, so, yeah, for all allies for two turns. And then ally buff on all allies except himself for two turns. So, again, if we've got two champions, instantly activates this skill if an ally is revived. Nice. And will not put this skill on cooldown. That is huge. That is really, really strong. If we've got three champions... It's also going to place block damage buff on this champion for two turns. So Sand Slash does something very, very similar to this. Um, so if you're an ally sort of drops low in HP, she throws out ally protection, puts block damage on herself. And it just means you can tank all those hits and it just it mitigates so much damage. Really, really strong ability. And then if we've got four champions, buffs placed by this skill cannot be removed. Wow. So that means that basically these are going to be protected buffs. That is really faction really strong. on your team. Let's take a look at the first champion who can use faction unity what? skills. No, no, no. Aislin, the stalwart. He's a oh, legendary yeah, yeah. Banner okay. Lords champion. Famous as the. What do you guys think of him as well? Like, he's very green. Like, I like. First king of a united K Rod after its devastating me. war with Frostheim and the actual founder of the Banner Lords themselves. To Sweet. demonstrate faction unity skills, we'll use Aislin's third skill. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, bruh. I just told everyone how to do this. I've already explained it. You don't need to. Hold the banner. Without any banner lords on his team, Aislinn will place a shield buff and an ally protection buff on everyone. With one ally, Aislinn will instantly activate this skill whenever an ally is revived. With two allies, he'll also place a block damage buff on himself for two turns. And a third ally means buffs placed by this skill are protected. He's 
broken. Absolutely broken. Oh. All right. Oh, no. Sorry, guys. Misclick. Two turns. And a third ally means buffs placed by this skill are protected. These are not just the allies from the same faction. So you could bring three Banner Lord allies to a fight against. So I don't see this being really strong in uh, Live Arena. It would be good for Classic and Tag. But for Live Arena, you know, it's going to be really, really difficult. First of all, you have to have Aislinn in the team. And then you need to have probably all four champions, all four, or all five champions, you'd be Banner Lords. And they can just ban Aislinn and that's it. Your team's pretty much broken and you can't lean on this OP champion. So yeah, he's not going to be good for Live Arena. But I could see him being good for Hydra. But again, like, it's, I think it's going to be really difficult to build. I couldn't think of, like, f well, four, including Aislinn, so three champions. I couldn't think of three really good champions for Hydra. You know, you need Hex, you need Provoke. There's a lot of things you need. Um, so, yes, yeah, so it's going to be really, really difficult to sort of try and bring that into a team. Against the Hydra or the Demon Lord, and your two remaining allies will still reap the... But yeah, it definitely looks more like it's for PvE than uh, for Arena. Benefits. Faction unity skills aren't the only bonus these champions have, though. They also have enhanced aura skills that can buff more than one... St it's kind of nice, but it's not going to be, like, super strong. It is in all battles, though. That. Yeah, the specifics not, not will that differ from champion to champion, but generally, they'll be at their most impactful when paired with other champions from the same faction. With these warriors hailing from the very top tier of champion dumb, don't expect to find them mingling around in the regular summoning. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I do not like the sound of that. So that means we are not going to be able to pull these champions from shards, and that's a major concern for me. I've, I'm just, like, worried that is this going to be battle pass only? Are we going to have to spend money to get these champions or are they going to be like you know behind events where they're just huge paywalls or you know you just drain free to play of all their resources like uh, the titan events the flipping deck events like, i'm not a big fan of those events they are ridiculously hard and yeah they just like they're a bit of a con and this is like a major red flag for me i really feel that if polarium do this then, you know, they are really trying to kill off free-to-play. And it's just such a stupid thing to do. You know, even like Raid Raid relies heavily on spenders and they love big spenders. But you need free-to-play players as well. You know, for the, they can coexist in a like in a world together, you know, and they, you need you need free-to-play players. If I I genuinely feel like if all the free to play players left raid and went to another game raid would die and that would be it it'd be game over and this could really this could like really happen and if everyone left raid they'll just go play a different game you know and you i think i feel like spenders do need free to play players you know it's nice to show off like these good champions you have or how high ranked in live arena you are and if all free to play players go then it sort of makes it become redundant and yeah, it's just it's just a huge red flag for me. Just not happy at all. Cool. Now, you'll need to keep an eye on the news to find out when and how you can get these faction icons from special in... I mean, it might be like set period times also. So, you know, they're doing that now where you get like three month time period to pull champions from like a, a 25X event or 10X. So that could be a possibility. But again, that is more for whales and big spenders them free to play and it makes it really hard to get these champions yeah just it's not good guys it's not game good. events that's all on faction unity skills time to talk quality of life updates here's one that's sure to make hunting for specific gear easier we're making super raids a permanent feature when update 8.20 launches the doom tower faction wars all gear dungeons finally this is something we need this is huge um, you know, Raid is a huge sucker of time, and if we can do things quicker, that's always good. And Gear Ascension Dungeons will have Super Raids available all the time. Nice. so they're doing Shadow, um, Phantom, and Sand Devil as well. We'll be making sure Super Raid runs count correctly for CVC tournaments. Thank God. The amount of times that I've done CVC and forgotten to turn off Super Raids, and I've just burnt so many resources, 
and lost so many points countless countless number of times and other events so you won't miss out on the double points either sweet we're also it's introducing nice. a new way to use champion fragments over the years you might have accumulated hundreds of unused fragments well now you can you're telling me bruh put them to good use. Introducing Fragment Exchange. With update 8.20, you'll be able to exchange your unused fragments for exchange points. And what do points mean? Reward. No, points means prizes, my friend. Rewards. Here's how it works. One legendary champion fragment, or five epic champion fragments, will get you one exchange point. Once you have five points, you can trade them for a fragment exchange chest. You won't be able to clear out your entire stash of unused fragments at once, though. You'll only be able to get 10 fragment exchange chests every week, with the limit resetting every Monday at midnight UTC. Within these chests are various rewards, but among them are fra fragments for... I mean, I've seen like the, some of these rewards are really nice. Like the XP barrels are good and um, they usually give you some decent chickens so you can get like legendary skill tome. And of course we can get these fragments as well. Um, I've seen um, High Mother Maud and I'm not impressed by her kit. She's a good champion, but if you're in this sort of stage of the game and it's going to take you about a year to get her. And yeah, if you're in this sort of stage of the game, you're not going to use her. Like she's not going to benefit my account. I doubt I'm going to have any use for her. But yeah, I, I'd rather be able to just get the champions that I've got on my account. Let me just show you uh, my account. Let's just have a quick look at some of the outstanding fusions we've got. Let's scroll sort of down. Let's sort of go halfway. But yeah, like, oh, uh, Isolin, I wish I had skipped that fusion. He's a, an absolute beast. So yeah, if I could get... um you know, fragments for Ins Isolin, I'd be well happy. Uh, Timid, you know, I wasn't super keen on him, but I wouldn't mind him. Oh, do you know, I skipped uh, the rabbit as well. Um, I would love to have him like, where, let's see. He must be way, way, way at the bottom. Did I, where is he? Yeah, I, I know that I like skipped hard on that one and regret it regret it heavily no way oh he wasn't a he wasn't a fragment fusion that'd be why okay but yeah but there's a whole like yeah and i like supreme el hain i i messed up on this one uh miscalculated and yeah i would love to be able to get like supreme el hain on the account as well that'd be huge for me and instead i'm just gonna end up with like a real mediocre champion in High Mother Maud, who I'm probably going to have zero use for, and it's going to take me a year to get her. So it's better than nothing, but I'm still, I'm still not happy about it. And let me just put this back up. For a brand new legendary support champion from the Sacred Order faction, High Mother Malda. If you need a powerful healer, buff manipulator, and reviver all rolled into one, Malda's your gal. You'll only be able to get her through the fragment exchange, though. So start exchanging those unused champion fragments. We'll post Malda's full skill set on social media, so be sure to follow us everywhere to see as soon as it's live. Our last big update in 8.20 focuses on bringing some highly requested balance changes to blessings. We're talking buffs, nerfs, and complete reworks. Expect to see a full change list on social media, but for now, here's a few highlights. First up, and we know you've been asking, we're changing yeah, Polymorph. I mean, Polymorph is amazing if you have it on your champions, but if it's on the enemy, it's not so great. Um, yeah, Polymorph is so broken. Um, I think it's going to be really difficult to fine-tune it. I feel like it's always going to be broken. I and mean, if you guys have ever played World of Warcraft, it is the strongest ability that a mage has. Um, yeah, it's always going to be broken. Changing the way Polymorph works. We're trying to find the perfect sweet spot for this ability. So we're making it so that this blessing can only activate once per enemy turn. It means you won't... Okay, so I guess if you've got like double strippers or something, that could be a team comp for the future. So that's kind of nice. Um, you know, makes us be able to deal with um, stone skin a little bit more have to worry about hurting your team of sheep then there's carapace which is getting reworked entirely so much That's so trash. we're changing its name to emergency heal 
rather okay. than decrease damage taken while under crowd control debuffs. This blessing will now heal a champion by up to 50. Nice. That 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 definitely looks like a way better. Way percent to go. of their max HP when that shield expires. Think of it as an emergency lifeline to help you survive an attack that's going to break through your shield. There's plenty more blessings that are being reworked, and we're looking forward to see how these changes impact raids meta. Of course, it wouldn't be a sneak peek video without a few new awesome champions to show off. You've already met Aislinn and Mauda. We've got two mythical champions coming. One oh, mythicals. I don't know. It's so hard when you're free to play to get hyped for mythical champions. You know, at the moment, you're going to get like one a year, if that, which is just ridiculous. Um, I, I just think that either they need to increase the chance of getting a mythical champion or just give us more ways of getting primals. Like, uh, I think... I don't know, I probably get about 10, 20 primals a month as endgame. And yeah, it's not, it's not good. One who bears the power of the sun, and one whose journey took him beyond the stars. There's also a pair of undead royals whose love trans- Yeah, so the new fusion is a must-go for. Uh, she looks like she's going to be absolute beast. And this new duo um, looks like a huge counter, Marichka and Taris as well. So that's going to be nice. Uh... Yeah, really, really looking for it. Uh, death to itself. A perfect addition to your collection for Valentine's Day. As always, our art team has done an incredible job bringing these champions to life. We can't wait to see them tearing it up in Teleria. And that's it. We hope the features and updates covered in this sneak peek have got you excited. Yeah, they have and they haven't. Like, really pleased about the Super Raids. Looking forward to the Fusion. But I still have like some major concerns. You know, I might be wrong, but um, knowing how Polarian work and how much they love money, I can see them definitely using like paywalls for these um, faction unity skill champions, which is a real shame. I just, I don't know. I'm always like, I'd rather play a game where it's more about skill than it is about how much money you throw into a game. And I always feel like free to play should be able to beat spenders. Um, but that looks like maybe that's not going to happen. But yeah, so that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll see you all in a video soon. Peace.